two, three, four, five. Mic check. Mic check. I think I am live. Let's turn my mic down. Mm-hmm. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy Wednesday here from the studio in Boise, Idaho. So here we are. Welcome to the live stream. Today we're talking about the Cirque of the Towers in the Wind River Range of Wyoming. Just a beautiful, beautiful area in Wyoming. And I'm going to get right into it today. I am, uh, I usually start out with some sort of, I don't know, something dumb. Like last week I think I was complaining about, uh, grocery stores and how they work, but I realize that most people don't watch this live, they watch it after the fact and they probably turn it on, actually trying to get information and it's like, what the heck is this about? So, without further ado, let's get into the Cirque of the Towers here. I'm going to mute that. We shall pull up our Google Earth. So the first thing you obviously have to do when you are going to the Cirque is get there. <laughs> Pretty interesting. I did see mostly Idaho 1A plates in the parking lot, so it seems like this hike is a popular destination for Idahoans. I know not all of you may be from Idaho, but uh, the majority of this audience is obviously from Idaho. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta get there. Um, from where I am, even if you live in Wyoming, uh, it's out in the middle of nowhere. So, <clears throat> um, so from where I am, it's about 10 hours, Boise, Idaho. And like I mentioned in the video, this is the trailhead, the big sandy trailhead. And these are the two closest towns. I said Pinedale and Boulder. Boulder is a gas station. It is basically what it is. It's not really a town. Pinedale, if we zoom in here, is actually like a little metropolis. It's got this beautiful lake. It's a, it's a very popular um, outdoor recreation spot. I kind of think, think of it like Riggins that we have here in Idaho. Just a little a little place that leads you to all these little recreation areas, Hell's Canyon, river rafting, stuff like that. Um, in Pinedale, you'll find amenities like coffee shops, good restaurants, things like that. We stayed at Jackalope Motor Lodge. My mom went up a day before I got there, stayed there, and then we both stayed there on our way back. Uh, it's around here somewhere. It's probably this guy right here. Um, right on Pine Street, right off the highway. It costs for a double room, uh, 130 bucks a night about. Really clean, the best shower, I think, <laughs> on planet Earth. Like, it totally caters to the backpacking community. Uh, as we'll talk about later, this, the CT runs right through the Wind River Range and the Cirque of the Towers. So a lot of through hikers come through Pinedale um come through the big sandy lodge that i'm going to talk about next and this place really really caters to that which i i dig um and at 130 bucks for a double room i mean it's a motor lodge but you know whatever and they have this huge parking lot if you have an rv or something like that i talked to the owners there they really want to cater to rvers people with trailers things of that nature <clears throat> um so that's option one for if you're gonna pick a place to stay before you actually hit the hike, this is probably what I would do, is stay in Pinedale. The drive from Pinedale to the trailhead is about two hours. It's along a dirt road. It's actually not very far. It's just that you're traveling, you know, 20, 25 miles an hour. Um, I would recommend a higher clearance vehicle, though I did pass a little Honda Civic doing it. So it's not the worst road, but it can get a little bit bumpy. Um, 
you'll see it here. This is the road. It kind of cuts up through here. And then the start of your hike is this, the big sandy trailhead. So option number two is for where to stay is, you know, this is a campground. Uh, I think you can reserve this one. There is some dispersed camping along the road here, places you can park your car. You can also just, I don't know what kind of vehicle you have, but you know, if you're living that van life, uh, you can park in the big sandy trailhead probably and stay overnight. Um, the other option is right down here. This is the big sandy lodge. This is a popular spot. This is like a, I had never seen one of these before, so it was really cool. But this is like a place where through hikers drop off and pick up their supplies, which I, I, I guess I've never thought about through hiking, but you know, if you're going for months at a time hiking, you got to resupply and stuff like that. So this lodge is where CT people resupply. My mom and I met a badass. Her name was actually Mary Badass. That was her trail name. She was in her 60s. She had she's completed the trifecta. She was doing the CT and we actually met her in here. She had stopped for the for the night to resupply, get a burger. They do burgers. Um, the accommodations are really, really rustic. Uh, you might have seen in the video. I won't switch over to the video right now. I'm on a roll. Um, but you stay in one of these little cabins here. I did not see, you know, I did not notice an area to like if you just wanted to, to tent camp here. I don't think they offer that or cater to that. Uh, it really is like if you're going to tent camp, you tent over, tent camp over by the, the trailhead. Here it's just like you're staying in one of these cabins. Cabins fit two people. They do have a shower, but it's, you know, off. It's, it's a public, it's a little like almost locker room, um, but it is hot water. It's definitely not as nice as like Jackalope Motor Lodge. Um, there is a bathroom there with indoor plumbing too, but again, it's more of the outhouse setup. It's not the actual uh, in your cabin thing. Cabins heated with a wood stove. Um, two beds. The beds are not as comfy as the Jackalope Mother Lodge. I'll just put it that way. It's not that they're uncomfortable, but rustic is the word I will keep using. And but for that 250 bucks, you get the you get the cabin rental, and then they feed you three meals. So you get uh, dinner at night, which is it. I mean, the meals were all good, pretty hearty. Uh, my mom might work here next year. <laughs> she got offered a job, and if she cooks, it'll be better. But um, they do famous like hamburgers too. That's their big thing. So you get dinner at night, you get breakfast in the morning, and then they, then they send you out with a like a pretty basic, you know, ham sandwich type sack lunch. So all that's included, and that's for two people, 250 bucks. Contacting them is a little tough. They don't have Wi-Fi or anything like that. So if you actually want to do this, you can. Um, you know, you email them and definitely you're going to have to wait for a response. And then, uh, you know, you get there and it's like, how do I pay? It's like have a check or cash or something like that. Um, so those are your options. And then from there, your trip starts at the Big Sandy Trailhead. Now, <laughs> you probably saw in the video, um, that the parking lot was pretty full. Uh, I don't know where I'm. And I just want to say that this trail, even though it gets a, a knock for being full, it, it's, it's really like, it's all relative, right? If you look at <laughs> the amount of space out here in the wind, like this, just the amount of vastness out here, and you look at this is the, this is the parking lot. So here you have your campsite, right? That we talked about earlier. Here's some overflow parking and here's the parking right there. Um, and it looks super full and it's like, oh, this place is gonna be crowded. You think about this, all these people are spread out over just, I mean, literally hundreds of miles. So if you get to the trailhead and you see all these cars, do not be surprised. 
Like I said, most of the cars in here were actually 1A plates. We met a couple from Stanley that was there. And I met a couple of people like this. Some people run the loop. Like it's like some sort of, like there's a 30 mile section. So people come out here and they do a marathon just for fun for a day. So, um, and there's other day trips and stuff like that. So really, uh, it's, it's not a very, I didn't find it to be a very, very popular trail. And um, definitely after the Big Sandy Lake, it just obviously, the amount of traffic drops off because it's such a tough hike. So that is the parking lot. That is the trailhead. You can kind of see it in there. And from the Big Sandy Trailhead, it is a very easy hike. And it's, that's pretty much, this is going to be the only time I say that. Up to the Big Sandy Lake. So the Big Sandy Lake is up here. And um, probably, we probably saw that in the video. I won't grab it now. But if you want to come experience the winds and maybe you don't want to do like the 45, 50 miles. Now I will talk about there are shorter routes out of everyone that we talked to, we talked to a lot of people because mom was a chatty Kathy. Um, we were the we were definitely doing the longest route out of everyone we talked to. No one else was doing like 45 miles. They were all around the 30 mile loop, and I'll show you that when we get there how that is done. Um, but like I said, if you're gonna go there once, like we were like, I mean, let's do it big. Um, but we also met some people around the Big Sandy Lake. We met like a, um, a gentleman and his older father who had been there for like three days. And all they did was set up home base at Big Sandy Lake. And they just were day hiking from there. And I thought that was a really good idea if your parent isn't as badass as mine and can go, you know, 45 miles and 10,000 feet of elevation gain. It's a real easy hike to get to Big Sandy Lake. I mean, real easy, real easy. It's like six miles. Um, I think it's six miles to the end. It's a mile long lake. So it's five to here, six to here. And then from there, you can do all these offshoots to, you know, you can obviously see the, the little lakes. Um, the most famous lake is Lonesome Lake. So a lot of people will stay at Big Sandy and then hike this, which is Jackass Pass, which we're gonna talk about here in a second, which you saw in the video. I called it a jackass, it is a jackass. And you know, that trail obviously sucks with gear on your back. So a lot of people might just stay at Big Sandy Lake and you could do this hike up to here and then come down or spend a day trip. So that's an option for you if you're just like, um, you know, if you just don't wanna bite off the Wind River Range and what it all entails. Um, all right, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and leave them in the comment section. I'll get to questions and just, uh, you know, some more, I don't know, less, less, <laughs> less about the hike at the end. But for right now, I'm just gonna keep this moving in case someone is actually trying to do this hike and found this video. So from the Big Sandy Lake Trail, Big Sandy Lake, you got to get up and over Jackass Pass. It is quite the climb. It's quite beautiful. Um, right around here is a lake um, that we passed and like we got stuck right here. There's a lot of off trail maneuvering where the trail kind of disappears and then reappears. That's kind of a constant theme on this trail. Um, you know, my mom said, and I think, I think she's correct, that she wouldn't be able to do it without me, not because of the physical part, but just because she's not as, you know, keen to like finding the trail and picking up the trail and, and the faint trail stuff. And so if that's you, make sure you definitely take someone with, with that, knows, that knows trail finding pretty well. Um, but right here, you come across, you come up, it's, it's, a, real, it's a real jackass. Um, here's the pass right here and from there you get that crazy view of what is Lonesome Lake right here and then this is the Cirque so if you're you're talking about well like I don't know French or whatever but the Cirque I kind of think has to do with circle this is the circle so you can see right here 
um, this enclosed cirque. And so when you talk about Cirque of the Towers, these are the towers, the circle of towers, and you are hiking around them. So you can see that. So once again, if you're not here to, if you're not down for the whole loop and the hardest part of the trip after this is over here, this is a good stopping point. This is a great out and back that you can do. And if you're talking about traffic, um, this definitely has people around it, but man, we didn't, I know we were there in September and stuff like that, but not a ton of people, um, not a ton. And a lot of day hikers that just come up, don't even go down to the lake, just see it from Jackass Pass and head back down. A lot of mountain climbers here in the area. Um, can't camp right on this lake. You have to camp a half a mile away. Really like that. You know, with technology and stuff now, I know, um, you know, there used to be this, you know, leave no trace principle was like, don't camp right next to a lake. Um, I've done a lot of research on that topic and that, you know, that was, that recommendation was made way back in the early 90s or late 80s hell maybe even the 70s but way back before the internet and technology and it was kind of this blanket statement just to protect all these areas and since then i've read a lot of you know scientific and peer-reviewed published articles by the wilderness journal and stuff that say um that isn't true we as human beings should be are actually drawn to water and can camp by water and with technology now i think if 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 a lake is getting too overcrowded and people are camping right on top of it, we have the technology now to say, hey, this is a real popular spot. You guys need to back up to like half a mile away and you can put signs up and you can make that known to people. And so I'd like to see that implemented more in the wilderness if there are problem areas. I know like in the Sawtooth, there's places like Edith Lake that I visited. Like, you know, at Alice and Toxaway, all the campsites are right on it. And then you go up to Edith and there's signs like, don't camp along this lake. And I think that's one of the benefits that technology could have with the wilderness where we don't have to guess anymore. Like, we can tell people, we can give directions. And I think that's a good thing. So anyways, back to my point half a mile away from this this lake and so you will see that people have done that for a while now so all the campsites are a half mile away you don't have to guess um we camped right here like we were right here i think this was this was like the area right here there's a big rock there was a horse camp right up here um and we got water and i got in right here as you saw in the video so We'll just go back to this video so you can see kind of what I'm talking about. Where am I going with this? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, this is Big Sandy Lake. So again, if you want to camp at Big Sandy Lake, really nice looking. Uh, that's right. So here's the, yes, here's the spot I wanted. So this spot right here and you can see the towers and all that is right here this is the beach right here and then we camped way back here so a little bit of a walk so that was day one it rained for on us on day one um did not snow on us thank god but it rained uh so we woke up late like i mentioned in the video and we got out of camp around noon oh good fishing and lonesome um fishing was hit or miss on this trail but i think lonesome is good and i talked to some people on the trail it sounds like they stock lonesome so that's why it, since it's popular and they want people to visit it's they stock it so if you're looking to do some fishing that's your lake we got up and we got started late do not do that if you're going to continue on this trail and you're going to hit Lizard Head Pass, do not start late. Start early. And we're going to talk about why. Um, so typically from Lonesome, if you're not going back, there's a couple of places you can go. Um, most people, I'll just get up here to it. 
Most people are trying to get to this lake. I believe it's this lake. It might be this one. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Um, Valentine Lake. Uh, and Valentine Lake is like, this is where that 30 mile loop happens. Most people come around and then apparently there's a way to go across here, across a, I'm going to butcher this, Wasachi pass over here um, or through here and come out, you know, and cut this second half, this 45 mile loop out. So a lot of people will come up, they're heading for this lake, this lake right there. So this lake to this lake. We stayed at this lake right here, which was um, Dutch Oven Lake. So from this lake to this lake, Valentine Lake or Dutch Oven Lake, it's about 10 miles and it's about 2,400 feet. And this first little section is pretty easy right to here. And then from there, your journey is up. It's way up. I think you actually come up here and come around. I just kind of did this real quick. Uh, but you're on the side of this cliff at this point. These are bear lakes and stuff like that. And once you start making this ascent, um, once you get past bear lakes right here, there is a path to get off and get, get into bear lakes and to actually set up camp. You can't stop. So, this whole trek right here, this, this, you know, you're going to have to go along here. You can't bail left. This is a cliff side. You can't bail to this lake. You can't bail to this lake. You got to come up. You got to come around to Cathedral Peak. And then the trail works its way back in here to these lakes. And that's where you can stop. And if you get caught up here, um, you're in some trouble. This is a... 11.5 thousand feet. I mentioned three times in the video that the wind on the Wind River Range is absolutely brutal. And that section is where it's one of the most brutal. It's gonna, like, if you're my mom's size, it, it, it'll li it lifted her in two parts on this trail off the ground, even with her full pack and stuff, like where it was like, whoa. And this is one of them. It was also a very, we had pretty good weather for the time of year. We had to put our stuff down and, and put on some extra layers um, to try to combat like it. My mom actually said to me, I'm going to get hypothermia. We have to stop. We have to layer up. So we had to stop and we had to layer up on this lizard head pass. So unfortunately, we got here at like three or four. Sun's going down. Wind is beating us. My mom is mentioning hypothermia. You know, at that point, I, I, I was pretty worried. We had a ways to go. I was fully cramping up because it, it had just been a, a brutal uphill um, across this area. And so if you, if you go early, if you leave early, it's a little bit safer, you know, if you need to stop and just hunker down and get some fluids or um, get some salt in you or anything, or maybe you want to stop at Bears Lake and just take a break from this absolutely crazy hike. You can do that if you leave early, but if you left late like we did and the sun is starting to go down and you gotta get a move on, you gotta get a move on. If you get sick, if you get dehydrated, I mean, you can't set up a tent, that tent would be destroyed. Um, there's all sorts of weather up there. Point being, if you're actually gonna continue the loop, if you're gonna continue from Lonesome Lake and you're gonna try to get to Valentine or to Dutch Oven Lake, um, and not Bear Lake, you need to get up and you need to get a move on, even though Lonesome Lake is uh, very, very beautiful. Um, so yeah, you, you, this is it too, and this is, this is what we're talking about. Over here is where Lonesome was. This is the Cirque in here. Um, this is my mom just traveling up with Kinsey. This is a continued up. You can just see the elevation. These are the bear lakes that we were I was just talking about. So these lakes right here on the side are these, these lakes right here. So this is where we are at this point in the video. Um, 
going across. And like my mom also mentioned, the ground isn't great. It's not, it's not some smooth trail. Um, I actually got plantar fasciitis on this trip. Uh, maybe it's good to take some extra insoles. Um, I'm just kind of, this is us getting all, you can see we put everything on because the cloud cover came, wind was super strong, and I, I was literally a little frightened at this point. Um, I mean, for myself, but mostly, you know, I, you, with mom, she's, I mean, she's a badass, but the body has limits. It, but she was owning it. Um, yep, this is it. This is kind of what I'm talking about. And at this point, it looks like, hey, that's great. We're going downhill and yada, yada, yada. We made it over, over the pass. It's like, it's, it's mostly the wind and the exposure of this area that just makes it really tough. Really, really tough, you could see. And this is Lizard Head Trail at this point. This is heading down towards Valentine. This is obviously just the basin that we came from um, before actually making it to Grave Lake. This is like at the pass when you're looking out over it. So you get to the pass, you're looking out, and down this way is where you're heading. That was uh, that's another look back at Lonesome. But eventually you make it here to Dutch Oven Lake. Now, like I said in the video, Dutch Oven Lake we had to ourselves. There are no fish in Dutch Oven Lake. I was kind of bummed about that. I did a, quite a bit of fishing at Dutch Oven, but we didn't, we didn't have, um, there were no fish in it. Um, and there's a lot of fish, yes. There's the Moss Lake Trail. So, as I'm talking about in this part of the video, that is right about here and that you'll see a sign that says you know valentine left and you'll see dutch oven right and it's just like you pick the two um this is the trail this is the map that we actually used it link is to this is down in the description along with this guy's article where he actually talks you through this. Um, let's zoom in here. So you can see right, what am I doing? Stop pressing stuff. So you can see right here, this is, this is the point where we, what, where I'm talking about, where we broke away. You go around Cathedral, come back, and then Valentine is here, Dutch Oven is here. This is the pass. The path where I was talking about that 30 mile loop, this is what most people do. So they'll come to Valentine here and then they'll come the next day over this, the Washaki Pass. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I am not. Um, and then they can stay at Skull Lake. You can stay at Skull Lake. That is the lake we stayed at on the last night. Or a lot of people stay at this Shadow Lake, which I hear if you're... <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't do because it just wasn't really on the trip. But in this book that I used, um, which I didn't leave a link to because I just I liked this guy's article. I thought it was better. I thought I thought this was a better trip itinerary, so I left that instead. But this book talks about Shadow Lake right here being like after Lonesome Lake, one of the most beautiful spots in the Cirque. Uh, it's kind of off the beaten path and you have to, you know, backtrack, which we weren't, we weren't, we weren't going to do any backtracking on this trip. Okay. We were, we were in it. We were just, it was, it was a lot. So we just, uh, we wanted to keep it going. So we didn't go here to Shadow Lake, but if you do that 30 mile loop, I would probably recommend that going from Valentine over the Washaki Pass at 12, 12 Mount Washaki. 12, 5, 2, 4, I'm sure that's not fun, and staying at Shadow Lake. Um, but I digress. We came up here to Dutch Oven Lake, and that was day two, and that was the hardest part of the day. The 
Next part of the trip, the next day we got up early, which, because <laughs> we were so freaked out, which was unfortunate, not unfortunate, but which was overkill because the next day was the easiest day of the trip. Um, it's mostly, there's a little bit of up and down. I think it's like a thousand feet of elevation this day or 1100. It's just like, the, and it's like seven miles and I'm talking about this yellow part. This was the nice part about this guy's itinerary and this guy's map. Um, it's all color coordinated so you can see here like our day one was blue, our day two is purple, our day three was yellow, and this green is the continental, um, the CT that runs right through the middle of it. Um, so that's where the through hikers are, go oh wait, no, that's the continental divide. Anyways, the CT follows that, so it's, it's around there somewhere. Anyways, or do people just hike the Continental Divide itself? I don't know. I'm sorry. I haven't done as much research on through hiking. It's really not my cup of tea uh, yet in this point in my life. I know my mom's into it. I don't know if you actually hike that green thing or you just, you just follow it. I digress. Day three was pretty easy. It's uh, seven miles. A lot of people stay at this moss lake. Uh, we saw a bear in here. I came around the corner, the bear was already running away. Like, I, I went for the bear spray first instead of the camera, and by the time I got to the camera, it was gone. Um, but I mean, that's my second bear encounter, so I'm not an expert in bears, but both times, they were both black bears, and they are just, like maybe they're probably different at night when they're kind of like just, I think that's where I'm most scared of actually seeing a bear is if it's at night and we're, um, and like it's like rummaging, trying to rummage into your tent is probably a little bit more uh, courageous. But the two bears I've seen actually during the day, they're some, they're skittish. <laughs> they, uh, they just have turned and bolted each time. and. Of course, as we walk through this area, it's just like a yell every now and again. Hey, bear, let them know where you're at. Um, so, pretty easy. This is the little windy uh, lake that we crossed. You saw me have to pick up the dog. It was actually much harder than I anticipated. We, we, we kind of, we were sitting there for, for a little while. So this is just the part through this area. And then, yeah, the dog wouldn't, wouldn't cross the, uh, the river, which is super annoying. It's like, come on, Kenzie, really? I'm gonna cross this little stream. And it looks small, but it, it's, it was pretty tough. You're talking about ice cold water, um, very, very slippery, doing it with a pack or your trusty four-legged friend. Um, so I actually did it three times. So I took my pack across, went back, Grabbed mom's pack, took that across, went back, grabbed Kenzie, went back. Mom had some extra like shoes that were her camp shoes that had rubber, like rubber soles and stuff. Um, they did not fit me, but I ended up wearing them like kind of covering half my foot and that helped a lot. So um, just think about that if you're going and you're actually doing this and you actually got to make this crossing, something for your feet. Um, could be nice if you take camp shoes. So yeah, that's the little windy river. And then, yeah, come on, dude. I was pretty upset at him at that point. This is Grave Lake. It is a huge finger lake in this area. This was probably the windiest lake we, uh oh, something just happened. Hold please. Is stream still up? Looks like it. Sorry, I had just had some feedback in my in my headphones here. So, uh, yeah, your mom is definitely a motivation to get my butt up and back on the trail. Please do more videos with her. I will. Great video. Thank you. The wind can be brutal. Your mom is unbelievable to be pushed through the miles of that wind. Perhaps you yes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'll get to it, but I. There was a, the next pass after Grave Lake uh, was nuts. Was nuts, and I'll get to that in a second. Keep rolling here, and then I'll get back to the comment section at the end. So, 
Grave Lake, obviously, the windiest lake. It, it was coming off the wind here, and we there was a lot of campsites along the lake, and we did not we did not pick one of those. I actually ended up being back way back tucked in the trees. You know, I, I made a mention of my um, tent. I took the two-person tent. I have a, geez, I have a couple. I have a couple of tents now, which is so funny. Not to divert or something, but this is the new the new thing that I was uh, that I was testing today. This is actually a teepee. Um, and this is the stove that goes in it. <laughs> So it's a teepee, you have a stove, and that's my winter setup, so we're gonna see how that goes this year. Um, but anyways, I have a one person, I have a two person. I took the two person because, not because it's roomier and it's more spacious and I love it to death, but it, it it's just stronger in the wind. And then making sure you're just kind of tucked in with some trees, like make sure the, the wind, is, like you're not putting your big broad side of your tent where the wind's coming from. The tents are designed so that you put basically your foot box where your feet go in the tent facing towards the wind. And then make sure you're, I would definitely recommend carrying a splint. I showed that last, you know, I have something on the, a video on the channel about fixing your tent poles and, and some re repair tips like take some tape, electrical tape, duct tape, uh, gaff tape, if you have it with you and a splint in case one of your your tent poles break it can definitely do it here and then make sure you're up in you know in some trees um, you saw in the day one there's that big rock there protecting yourself and you'll see campsites in that in those types of areas because this is the wind river range and like people are doing that so like our place where we stayed at grave this night was um, actually like uh, I, you could tell a hunting party had been there. They had the big log over the site so that they could hang their kill um, for to protect it from the bears and stuff like that. So just you know, be aware, use some precautions when you're when you're in this in this area. Just just know that like the wind is going to be hitting. So when you set up for a good night's sleep you know just set up accordingly and if you have a stronger tent out of the two or you own a couple and you have a stronger tent definitely take that one i didn't get the chance to fish in grave lake it was just too windy um but a beautiful beautiful view um for sure so yeah you can see here like this is a great site uh, as is why i kind of put this in the video beautiful place where you rock climb a lot of rock climbers come here and rock climb this thing but you can see like there was a lot of sites like this I would not recommend doing that even though your view is is stunning um, you just want to be tucked back in there like you can see <laughs> you can see how tucked in I was I was like I am not doing this there's the footbridge that you'll cross at the beginning of the lake to get over there um, all that, yeah, it's not an ocean. It's not supposed to look like there's waves coming across it. And you can just see in this what's going on with this breeze here. You can just see it in mom. Um, yeah, windy, windy ass place. But of course, just stunning. And if you want a piece of wind, you just camp and then go down and do some yoga under the, mom and I ended up doing a little yoga in the wind next to uh in this meadow with some sunlight so that was nice uh, again not to belabor this point you can just see the kind of area we camped in or to to belabor the point i definitely belabored that point in the video holy cow um but hey it was the warning uh you can hear the elk in this part of the video i won't play it but um the elk, the elk were bugling so hard. Two, we were two days away from the hunting season, and they were going so hard. By night, by this night, 
I was actually starting to get annoyed with them. Like, I know that sounds weird because you're like, you're out in nature and it's, it's so cool when you, it's like, it's like a grave lake. I swear we heard elk getting it on. I mean, they were right in our camp where it was like, geez. And you could hear them going back and forth and it sounded like, I mean, it's going down. Elk babies were being made. But then by night three, it was like, you guys be quiet for a second because we're trying to sleep and your bugle is very high pitched for such a big animal. It's really weird and it's, it's like, no, it's always cool to hear elk, and you will hear them out there. You will hear them a lot. Um, also, my mom is a really good chef out here, if you didn't notice. I didn't even put her best meal in this video for some reason. Um, like, we had sushi one, <laughs> sushi rice bowls one night. And while we were out there, we, we made plans for, like, a 10-part series where I'm going to do, like, a full-on backpacking cooking show with her because she was awesome. Um, this was kind of her setup, uh, a link to all of her gear. I actually put her, I got so many requests last, last video of like, Hey, we want to know your mom's gear. Um, and so her cooking, at least what she cooks with out here, this pot and stuff is in the, in the description if you want at it. But even like this, this like, oh, <laughs> you can't see what I'm talking about. Um, even like her, this aluminum siding, this is to protect from the wind and keep this stuff cooler while well, it was all dehydrated. This is all rehydrating and stuff like that. So if you want to see her pot set up, MSR made it and, uh, God, we ate like Kings. It was super cool. So that's grave. And then after grave, By the way, fun thing, you're about to see my warp stabilizer right here in 321. There it is. This was it. I didn't do a lot of time lapses because I was always just so concerned about the wind. So concerned about it knocking over my camera. So this was the second to last day. And I think lizard head day two is the hardest. You can see why that's a rock climbing mecca, by the way. But this one really got mom, and it's because of this pass. Um, I want to say it right. Is it Muriel? Haley. I don't know where I got Muriel. There's another river crossing, but you can get over it. Um, that is Haley's Pass. So this is the hardest part for my mom, and it may be for you. This is the second place where the wind actually, like, picked her up and took her. Uh, I got one shot of it, but then I actually had to help her up this because it was, it was pretty brutal. So this is Haley's Pass. After Haley's Pass, I will say, it's the downhill the rest of the way till you get to your car. So, like, when you come to this point... This is like the finish line. This is not the finish line because you've got like 15 miles left or something like that. But this is like your last test in the winds, hopefully, if you're. Um, and this is Haley's Pass. And I wonder if there's a shot of it. There's the dog. So. This is kind of what it looks like. You can see it's, it's really sheer, and my mom is afraid of heights, she says, even though it's like she deals with heights all the time. Um, so we had some problems here. The wind was lifting her. She was afraid of going over the side. Um, and I don't know if you could see it. So this is it. This is a good kind of shot of it. This was really... <laughs> I didn't notice it, and I'm a terrible person and son for doing this, but, you know, this is her second backpacking trip. She's still learning. This is her cooking stuff. Um, and she kind of had it clipped to the back of her, her backpack. You know, if you look on a backpack in the top, there's a place where you can, I think it's, I'm not going to go and get my backpack. Maybe I can, you can see it in a later clip. But I think it's it's like you can put a bear canister or, you know, a, a foam pad up there and it kind of like cinches down up there. 
So that's where that bag should have been the whole time. Right after this pass, which is 15 miles left, it was like, why is that on your back like that? Because it was acting like this pendulum. Like as you move, it just swings back and forth. And that just kind of like puts you off balance and it put her off balance. She went 30 miles like that until I noticed it in the middle of this. So what we ended up doing at one point, because this part got really sketchy for her, was I took that and I just carried that with my hands. And then, um, and this is always a good trick. I know you do it here. It's a trick that I learned here with like Chicken Out Ridge, climbing Mount Bora, where you don't actually have to like, I don't know, tie off or something like that. But we tied a rope around each other's waist with me actually leading. Because, I mean, she kept being like, she would not look, she couldn't look up or she wouldn't, or I don't know, she couldn't look up. So she was following my feet. And um, just having a hard time. So being able to tie that rope around, like we both talked afterwards, obviously, it's like, and taking that pendulum off her back really helped. One, I was able to kind of pull her, just give her a little like, you know, like assist on the weight part. And then two, if she's not looking up and she doesn't know where the hell she's going and she's like, she kept yelling, Jonathan, I can't keep looking back at her to make sure like, hey, are you, are you still with me? So tying the rope really helped with that. So if you're going and you have someone older, less experienced kids or something like that, um, that was a trick we used. And again, it's steep. It's not long. It's just very steep. And then the other, it's, again, it's the wind. It, it's like when you're getting hit in the side with these 80 mile an hour gusts, um, it's, it's rough. You can see it here. You can see her try to put the pack on here and just kind of get blown over. Like, that's what we're talking about. It's like, I, I mean, that's why the camera shakes because it's like, oh, shit. I wanted to get one shot because I didn't get much shots of Haley's pass we were trying to get over. And it's like, oh, I better go help her, <laughs> help her with that. Um, and, and like, my mom is a badass, but we were both, by this point, like, it doesn't matter who you are, your body is kind of like, dude, I'm sick of taking this pack with me, you know, man, like, you're, you're late, you're starting to cramp and stuff like that, so, so by day four, you know, day two is probably harder, but by day four, your body is like, all right, dude, I'm over this, um, and then you got to get around these two little lakes, the wind is still, you could see it coming off there, uh, not much of a trail, and then it's all downhill. That is Mays Lake. So that is Mays Lake. If we pop back over, we'll pop back over to the, to the old Google Earth here. We haven't seen it in a while. So here's the pass. You've come from Grave Lake. You come up, you come over right next to Pyramid Peak. This is Mays Lake here. And then you pass another little lake here. And you keep going. And then from there, easy. Pyramid Peak, Mays Lake, Skull Lake. So Skull Lake is where we got to on that last day. Again, if you're feeling super ambitious and you want to go to Shadow Lake, I hear that's beautiful. Skull's Lake, Skull Lake was no, no slouch though and we were happy to stay and that doesn't take you off the trail. You are still on the trail getting to Skull Lake. Um, Skull Lake did have fishing. There is a ton of like brook trout too. I don't know where Skull Lake is in this one. It's probably this one. There it is. So we camped right here next to Skull Lake. It's another beautiful, beautiful little area. Um, fish in that one. Uh, if, if you walk, they have a lot of brook trout in, in, the, in these streams, these little fish. And you can actually just catch them with your hands in the streams as you're going over. I had a lot of footage of me catching them. I don't know why I didn't add it. I'll probably get to that. I'll probably talk about that one at the end, the editing process of this. 
Um, well, yeah, there's a ton of brook trout up there. They're going to be in just chilling like salamanders in like really thin water just over every stream you're crossing. So take your time, look down. You can pick them up. I did. Put them back. Um, they're real tiny little things. And then from Skull, it's just, you know, another 10 miles. So the last day from Skull, and you can see this is shadow. So I kept talking about like that beautiful shadow lake. And obviously you can probably guess why, or I'll just guess why with you. There's the Cirque. <laughs> so it's on the other side of the Cirque. Um, trust me, I did not regret not making it to Shadow Lake while we were out there, but now that I'm like, hmm, I kind of wish we had seen Shadow Lake. Um, so that's Maze. Here's Skull. This is looking back up. So, um, these are the brook trout, you know, they're not very big. They're kind of tiny. They got these cool little spots. Um, and then from there, it's a, it's a quick 10 miles. This is where you would turn and go to shadow. So right here, you can see this trail back into here. That's where that shadow lake is. This big wide area and back to the parking lot that big white area is like right here so that big white area is this fish creek park um and then you are back to the trailhead and that's circuit the towers any questions Don't show too many folks how great Idaho is or else you'll end up with the kind of crowds we now get in Southern Utah. People everywhere. Um, no, I'm gonna keep showing people how great Idaho is. Thanks for your concern. There was someone on the trail too that said that exact same thing to me. He was so funny, he saw the camera and uh, <laughs> uh, he was just like, oh, are you a photographer? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I'm a photographer too. And I'm like, oh cool, what do you do? And he's like, well, I live in Salt Lake and I do um, photo and video for all like the ski resorts and for Zion and stuff like that. And then he's like, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And he's like, but don't post anything about this. It's too crowded, which it wasn't. And I always found, I found that really interesting. I was like, here's this like 50 year old dude from Utah who had this like claim to the Circa of the Towers in Wyoming. He's totally cool with making a living promoting Utah, but uh, that one place in Wyoming, for some reason, he thought he held claim to it, which was hilarious. Yeah, I'm not a gatekeeper. No, these places are for everyone. If you want to go do the Cirque, you should go do the Cirque. I just, I'm not a, on Facebook a lot. I just posted a great article from Outdoor Magazine from uh, British Columbia about a guy talking about how like totally backing that up, like how every, everywhere is getting crowded. It's not just like your one place, it's every place. And he had some great, great insight into, into how, how gatekeeping, I like that term, is just bad for the outdoors and, and the other ways that you can go about it instead of that's really, really, uh, I don't want to call it dumb, but just not going to work of don't tell people like all right you keep saying that that ain't gonna work dude if you wanna if you don't want people out there and again just go a little farther man <laughs> uh, the entitlement the entitlement that you own the outdoors or that that place is yours don't show people get out of here um that was the one thing that's that was interesting to me you know this video was pretty a pretty interesting one to edit uh 
you know, if you could, if you could tell, from, I felt like this video was a little different from my other ones in the fact that, like, it was very much a little more tutorial style. Um, I don't know, I struggled with making this one. You know, I was there with my mom and it 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 was just it was just it was just weird. Like I was there to kind of go over some mental health issues with my mom. You know, my mom takes has taken and she won't mind me saying this, antidepressants for like 20, 30 years. Um, she's an RN. She's obviously in the medical field. And, you know, I used to take antidepressants when I was like 20, in my early 20s. And I didn't really like them. Um, and my mom has always stated that she used them because she has a chemical imbalance and that they, they really helped. And I was there to just try to, like, figure out my mental health with my mom because it's like, obviously... I came from her, so my mind is probably a lot like hers. Um, so that first night, you know, at the lodge, we were sitting there and like we were just, we were talking. Um, there may have been some psilocybin involved that my mom brought and um, just trying to hash it out. I had made this video about the sawtooths and just like kind of my, the, the mental health things that I had going on. and. Uh, my mom had said that really bummed her out and just trying to talk with her about that and stuff like that. And then, um, that journey was really great for me with her and I, I didn't capture that and I wish I had. Um, you know, on day one, she talked to everyone. She talked to everyone, everyone on the trail, like every single person. And it's not like a, hey, how are you? It was like where I had to finally like, it was, it, it, it was just everyone. And she wanted to have these full blown conversations. And so we have like that conversation with Utah guy telling me not to post. We had like a talk with one guy that just said something like, just made a comment like fucking YouTuber as we passed. Um, we got to one group of guys that was just like, uh, like my mom wanted to talk to them about pictures and I had just kept walking at that point. I was like, my anxiety was through the roof and uh, they did the whole thing, which every photographer just loves <laughs> where she's like, this guy took a great picture on his iPhone. You have to come see it. And <laughs> I literally yelled from across the trail, like, no, I'm good. And then the whole group and my mom is like, no, come on, you got to come back and see this. You'll appreciate it if you're a photographer. And it's like, of course I come back and he shows me this picture on his phone, which is like a picture of the mountains, which is great. It's like, cool, awesome. I see that mountain there. Thank you for showing me that picture. It's time to move on. And then I had a full blown, like right after that, I had a full blown panic attack, like where we thought I was like, holy shit, I don't know what's happening to me right now, like collapsed on the trail and had to have like a real talk with my mom, like, dude, I don't, I don't know, like, I am here to try to figure this out, but, like, in that video where I talked to you about, where, like, having this camera and seeing people gives me anxiety, like, I wasn't bullshitting on that, mom, like, I know you didn't like that video, but it's, like, that's a real thing for me, and I'm having, like, an episode now, and that's kind of why I want you here, so that we can talk about that, and hopefully I can figure that out and work on that part of myself, but also, please, if you're going to talk to people, you can't do stuff like that, like drag me into the conversation. And I didn't capture any of that because my mom said like that kind of stuff bummed her out. She was on and on about this like Dixie gal who's some YouTuber with like 300,000 followers. She's some like, you know, 40 year old cute blonde lady that talks with an accent. Hey, I'm Dixie y'all. And this is the trip and yada, yada, yada. And I don't know, like that's kind of how I shot it. And I wish I had the guts to go back and shoot it, you know, more honestly. Um, maybe you all don't like that. I mean, this video, the, uh, 
you know, the numbers on it are good. It's obviously working. People seem to like it. But for me, when I go back and I look at it, I'm like, that wasn't the story. That wasn't what was happening out there. And for as much as like, I do want to please the YouTube algorithm. It's like, I don't think that's actually what I wanted to do when I started this. I actually wanted to tell my story and hopefully it resonates deeper than just a hike. And sometimes that's a bummer. And obviously this one had a happy ending. It was a bummer in the beginning, but I really did. I was able to work through some stuff with my mom, work through a lot of that anxiety actually start talking to people on the trail. And then when I went back to the Sawtooth this time with a, a group of four guys, um, it was like my favorite hiking trip ever because all that anxiety had, had gone. And uh, I wish I had captured that. I wish I had uh, told that story in this. Um, it would have been a lot different, um, but it just would have been more more authentic I think and I think I would have I, I think I would have liked putting it together more I mean because all these youtubers all these hiking youtubers that's what they were right and that's what they are they're hikers first they're not filmmakers they're not storytellers they're not that and that's cool like that Dixie gal she's she was a she wants to hike she's not a filmmaker um, I think for me and for like like that's why I like Craig so much Craig Adams um, it's like we were filmmakers first and then we got into hiking and I think from a filmmaker's point of view it's like we when you get into that when you get into this job it's like we we got into this to tell a story and to to not to not create a tutorial but anyway I digress I'm glad you all liked the video I liked I mean it was it was a great trip uh, and it was definitely a learning experience for me and dealing with the wind and just um, dealing with uh dealing with people and just learning about myself but uh i think putting that into the video would have been would have been awesome um but yeah so that's the wind river range I enjoyed tutorial the style because it helps show us that we can get out there and push through physical mental struggles even with the chatty Cathy LL. Yeah, and you know, I think it's uh I think my favorite videos are the ones that find the balance. So it's not that I don't like making the tutorial or anything like that or or telling people how to do the hiking or or to give the hiking tips. I do enjoy that too because I want to give back to people as well like just like show everyone how to do the hike it's the balance right it's like if you notice in the video i was talking about wind a lot and it's like when i go back and i look at it it's like dude how much did you talk about the wind was that the only like by day four because you only see 13 minutes i talked to that camera for like an hour every day and it's like by day four i was just still talking about the wind <laughs> It's like I needed to find that balance with the storytelling between um, like my journey like that and, and the actual hike. And uh, I don't think I did that in the way that I, my favorite way possible. But that's totally cool. It's cool. It's all a learning experience. It, it, was, it was a good learning experience for me. It was a good learning experience like, okay. That's good. The tutorial style is good. Now, how do you incorporate that other stuff? And I think the sawtooth video I made um, is going to be like, you definitely get back from these things at, with and like get off the trail. And you know, like, I know when I get off the trail, like, all right, that is going to be good. Or that's going to be the, that's going to be a clunker or, oh shit, how am I going to make that even? watchable um so what are your favorite trails in the sawtooth um the one i just did was awesome uh it was like to baron it was from the inlet to saddleback lakes to baron lakes to grand Jean. Um, that was one of my favorite hikes the fishhook meadow hike is obviously the one that um, i always tell people to do it's really easy and then Alice talks, the Alice Talks Away loop is like, 
if you want a good 20 miles of the most stunning sawtooth scenery uh, that's not too hard, that one. So Alice Talks Away, Fish Hook, if you're just looking for a day hike, Hell Roaring Lake if you're looking for a day hike, um, if you're looking for a through hike, the inlet to, from Redfish to Grand Jean was amazing. And then if you're looking for like an off the beaten, like no one's going to be there type hike, uh, day hike, Cabin Creek is a good one. Definitely check out Cabin Creek. Um, I think it's like seven miles out and back. Really good elevation. I have a video on it. Um, and I really dug that one. Brett did too, so. I know that's a good one, but we'll get more into the sawtooth on the next one, but all right, it's been an hour. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me for the live stream. Thank you, as always, for watching the video. It means a lot. That is the number one thing you can do for me is like, if you want to support the channel, watch the video. <laughs> like, that's the biggest thing. Watch the video the whole way through. And then the second way you can support me is just tell someone, share it on your Facebook page. And uh, that's great. I've done Hell Roaring Late and a few in the White Clouds. Awesome place. I wanted to get into the White Clouds more this year and um, just I didn't want to do them in the smoke. So hopefully next year is a big White Clouds year for me because I haven't really done the White Clouds yet. So, but all right, everyone. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.